In the last lesson, we were talking about the difference between location, space, and place. We're going to be continuing that discussion now with the realization that our sense of place can be constructed, and therefore it has the potential to be inaccurate. Sometimes people or groups of people go to great lengths to deliberately construct a sense of place, and at other times this is done as a side effect of other activities. For instance, think about a university campus. Often universities will try to cultivate a very specific sense of place when you walk onto campus. Often they want for the university to be a very distinct area from those around it. They do this by trying to invoke a sense of place about the campus, and they have a variety of techniques in order to do this. Architectural style is of course a big one. Having a unified architectural style help makes the university a cohesive place and distinct from the areas that may be only a block or so away, such as the off-campus college bars. If I were to show you different photos of campuses, even though you had never been to that particular college campus before, it's still likely that you would be able to identify lots of them as a college campus. We have an architectural style that we associate with college campuses very broadly anyway. It's often the case that universities want to invoke a sense of place that associates it with ancient Greek centers of learning. That's why you often see a large building with columns that are reminiscent of Greek structures, because they're trying to associate themselves with ancient Greece and its tradition of learning and scholarship. We can also consider the ways that universities use space. It's a common feature of college campuses to have a large open quad area uh, for people to play and hang out in with those large Greek-inspired buildings around it near the very center of the campus. You can often also see a football field, a track, and other sorts of sports facilities around the perimeter. So if you were looking at an aerial photo or a satellite image of an area and you begin to see these features, you would probably know that you're looking at a university. However, even within this larger framework of invoking a similar sense of place, universities often try to distinguish themselves from one another. Perhaps you can think of certain places, certain buildings, or certain monuments on your particular college campus that are iconic to it. Whenever you see these photos on television or online, it automatically invokes a sense of place about that particular campus. This is often used with sports competitions. When the university hosts a sporting event, and especially if it's going to be televised, the university wants to be sure that its look makes it look distinctive and different from other universities. Even over the television, they want people to have that sense of place about where the uh, football game or other sporting event is being held. Sometimes this sense of place is even used as part of the sports competition itself in a certain sense. When a football team, for example, is invited to play a home game against your football team, often the university wants to impress a sense of place very strongly in the other team's mind so that they will know that they are away. The University of Alabama does this specifically with the entrance to its football stadium. Visiting teams have to enter the stadium through the Walk of Champions, with Bryant-Denny Stadium looming overhead. All of these are designed to invoke a particular sense of place into the visiting team as they enter. When you're there and walking along that Walk of Champions, the sense of place is the University of Alabama. By the way, this also has an effect in marking territory. We'll talk more about territory later, but you can probably also see how you might invoke a sense of place in order to establish certain territory as belonging to a certain group. So the football stadium might be a good example of constructing a sense of place to those who are visiting it or those who are just seeing a picture of it. But you can also think of constructing a sense of place for people who have never been to a particular place. Sometimes this is done to deliberately manipulate people. For instance, if you're trying to convince a population to go to war, then you might try to get the population to associate the other place as hostile or aggressive. 
trying to imbue the population with a, a certain meaning and perspective about a particular place that might encourage or uh, make more permissible hostile actions against them. You can find this uh, in many different propaganda maps, especially. There were many propaganda maps that were created by Germany prior to the Second World War, uh, one of which I'm thinking depicts Czechoslovakia as an ideal place from which to launch air attacks on Germany. You can see the range of bombers flying out from Czechoslovakia to uh, cover all of Germany. So that's trying to establish Czechoslovakia as a threatening place to Germany. So I did mention that sometimes a sense of place is constructed uh, incidentally as the effect of other actions that are going on. So to return to the example of the college campus, where we did have uh, a very deliberate construction of a sense of place by university uh, administration, but think about something like a fraternity and sorority row after a particular wild night of parties. Maybe there's uh, pizza boxes, beer cans, and then think about if you were visiting the campus and on that day and you were taking a stroll through the campus and then you take a turn down sorority or fraternity row. That visitor would also have a sense of place impressed upon him or her, but one that's probably very different from that of an ancient Greek center of learning and scholarship that was trying to be deliberately cultivated on other parts of campus. As I'm talking about this, I'm reminded of the broken window theory of crime prevention. While this theory is definitely debated in academic literature, it basically posits that urban environments should be carefully monitored uh, for signs of degradation, such as broken windows and buildings, because their presence gives the impression that this is not a location that people care about. And if it seems like an area that people do not care about, then according to the theory, that leads to more vandalism and eventually greater and more serious crimes in the area. You get this escalation going on. So you could contrast a sense of place that is invoked by a run-down and abandoned building in an urban environment with a sense of place that is created by large houses with well-maintained lawns in the suburbs. The sense of place that is being constructed there gives you an indication of what activities would be permissible in that location and which would not be. People's senses of place can be influenced or completely formed by a number of sources that they can be strongly influenced by even though it may be a passive influence and they might not even recognize that it's going on. These kinds of sources that do construct senses of places in our minds include things like movies, video games, novels, and even comic books. Think about how different places are represented in the movies that you watch or the video games that you play. It may well be the case that your perception of certain places is strongly influenced by the images or the representations of these places that are presented to you through these channels. There are a number of different successful video game franchises in the first-person shooter genre, for instance, that depict different places that are often of geopolitical significance as the player conducts different military missions in those areas. And so it's possible that the players of those games can be strongly influenced by the depiction of those locations within the video games. And actually, there is a lot of research and scholarship in this area if you're interested. In political geography, we do study the way people's perception of place can be formed through media outlets. And this is particularly done in a field called popular geopolitics. And we'll talk about popular geopolitics much more in a future lesson. But for now, it's important to think about how your perception of a place may be created, informed, influenced, or mediated by different factors that could be beyond your control. That's one reason why in geography we are big advocates of personal travel. You know, I like to encourage everyone who's involved in geography, especially all of our geography undergraduates, that you need to go out of the United States and you need to uh, you know, study abroad for a semester or travel through Europe for a, for a summer or something like that because that travel helps to remove some barriers 
okay, between you and how you experience other places. It helps you to experience it more directly and therefore hopefully create better and more accurate senses of places rather than always receiving that through some uh, mediated means.